And today I'm going to talk a little bit about our work with wild soybean. So this is wild soybean. It is the progenitor or the parent of our modern day soybean. So about 10,000 years ago, this, this species of soybean wasn't around and this is what we had. And through the evolution and selection of early farmers for desirable traits, we developed the modern day soybean glycine max. And our project is mainly involved in discovering novel genes still left in wild soybean that were selected against when we created glycine max. And wild soybean is glycine soja. So we're really focused on taking wild genes that are present in the collection in the USDA of about 1300 glycine soja uh, varieties and transferring them to the domesticated soybean. And there has been some work, but it's really extremely tedious to work with wild soybean. Um, as you can see, the pods are much smaller. The seeds are about a tenth the size of a seed of the modern soybean. <clears throat> and the, the main genes that we're looking for are involved in disease resistance, drought tolerance, compositional traits, and yield. So previous research has shown that there has been soybean cis nematode resistance genes that are not found in the domesticated soybean, but they are found in the wild soybean. And that really prompted us to develop a program to transfer 35 different wild soybean types into glycine max types. And the way that we're going to do this is a novel approach to growing extremely large population sizes. So this year in Columbia and down here in Missouri we have wild soybeans and then we have the hybrid soybeans growing and we have populations of over a hundred thousand plants we're where we're going to go into the population and select plants that look like this because this is what soybean farmers grow nowadays. Move that. The next part of our project is to evaluate all the promising traits that are involved in this wild soybean. So this year we have over 80 different varieties of wild soybean growing in Columbia. We're going to harvest the seed for those. We're going to measure the seed for protein, oil, fatty acid composition, carbohydrates. We're also evaluating drought tolerance and flood tolerance in the original wild soybean so we can prioritize which populations to work on. And our last objective is really to evaluate the most efficient way of developing these lines because when you make this cross you're going to have a lot of deleterious genes. We don't want our soybean to look like that. So that's why we're growing large population sizes and selecting for plants that look like this within 100,000 plants. And so the, the main take home message is that in wild soybean there's more than twice the amount of genetic diversity than in cultivated soybeans. So the only way for us to make advances in yield potential through diverse genetics is to tap into the wild soybean genetics.